Hello, everyone. Welcome to Brick Vault. Put away your Tamagotchis, your slap bracelets, log off your AOL Instant Messenger. Today, we are visiting a niche of the 90s that helped popularize underground street racing and the art of drifting. These are some custom Lego builds of select cars from Initial D by the designer Fukusaku. First a manga that started in 1995, then a show in 98. The series follows Takumi Fujiwara and his unassuming Toyota Trueno AE86 as he slowly but surely turns into a street racing legend of Japan. Included here is also his father Bunta's Impreza STI, the first, fourth, and final stage of Keisuke's Mazda FDRX7, and the dastardly Aikawa's Lancer Evo 5. On its surface, Initial D is a coming-of-age story combined with story arcs, sort of like Dragon Ball Z. You race, learn a lesson, bigger challenger steps up, train harder, then race again and repeat. But there is something strangely specific when you start paying attention to the characters, race locations, and cars. The creator of Initial D not only based his main character, allegedly, on a real street racing legend, but driving techniques have very technical and specific descriptions in the story, mountain passes, and even specific corners directly reflect real places frequented in the street racing community, and each car in the manga has a page dedicated to their technical specs and custom mods, even when those things are not animated or even referenced anywhere else. It has oddly realistic elements of the Japanese underground racing scene that had enough teeth to hook a generation of drivers all over the world. Fukusaku, the Lego builder, focused on a handful of some of the more important cars in the series and fleshed out their builds with a lot of detail. Before I get any further into each model, let me first just say that the instructions can be found at our web store, brickvault.toys. Included with each purchase is the PDF step-by-step -step building guide, a digital parts list for quickly uploading and ordering all the pieces you'll need. All of our models are built IRL, tested for strength. Instructions are tested so they're easy to follow along. And if you wanted to print stickers for extra tofu shop detailing, we've also included a pre-sized PNG. Buying instructions is a great way to help support us and the talented people we work with, like Fukusaku, who has a wide variety of models under his belt, like a ton of micro-scale Star Wars vehicles, including the beefy micro-scale Republic frigate, a tiny Republic frigate, and he also knocked out some fig-scale speeders, and a very well-proportioned dump truck and loader. Any and all support is greatly, greatly appreciated, so hit that like button. Link's in the description below. That's BrickVault.Toys, and let's jump in with the car that started it all. The Fujiwara Tofu Delivery Toyota Sprinter Trueno GT Apex AE86, aka the White Ghost of Akina, aka a Corolla. That's right, this downhill demon was no more than your standard cheapo clunker at the end of the day, but this was also the reason why his win ratio was just so incredibly impressive. In order for Fukusaku to really sink deep into the details of the Lego build, he upscaled the car a little from fig scale, something like closer to the contemporary speed champions sets that you see today. And looking closer here, you can see a straightforward tapering in the front by the hood with a clever use of a large claw piece on either end. In this area, there is essentially the only interactive function of any single vehicle in the lineup, and that is the pop-up headlights. It's a simple enough feature to manipulate and pretty important one to include as Pretty much all the driving is done at night, and these headlights are essentially always up. Now, the outline of the windscreen and back window are highlighted with some basic mod plates and bars, as is the case for all of these models. The interior has dark red highlights, a shifter, and Takumi's water cup for practice. There is some great sizing and spacing in the back for plates and brake lights. And all in all, it's a fun model with a couple of fancy techniques that help make this car look even more accurately not fancy fancy in real life. There is one mod you can add or change on this vehicle, and that is the black hood for when he replaces his 
blown out engine with the uh, 20 valve silver top. So depending on the point of the story that you prefer, this is also an available look. Next up is his father Bunta's car. The Subaru Impreza STI was at the top of the rally scene at the time, winning gold several years in a row. And this vibrant blue and gold rims is an iconic clashing set of colors that defined the look for this car. In terms of the storyline, Takumi got to practice with one of the best racing vehicles of a generation, which gave him this sort of invaluable insight to the limitations of his own 8.6. The front end has all the recognizable features. The small red logo is just visible in the center. There's a slight slant for the front lights, circular fog light covers in blue, and that large hood scoop simply cannot be ignored. Inside, there's a bit of covered or sunk in dashboard plus a full black interior. And in the back, I really enjoy the little blade pieces used to show some tapering details around the back window. The Impreza has a pretty massive rear wing and a fairly well-rounded bottom with a great combo for the shape of the lights. And all in all, it's a great looking model that rolls well and also captures some uh, really accurate shaping along the bottom edges of the body. But now it's time to move on to Keisuke's Mazda RX-7s. I mean, it's just one car at the end of the day, but it has a few different looks throughout the series. When you mix an insatiable drive for self-betterment and competition with seemingly no monetary limitations, you end up with a car that's got bells and whistles plus a whole lot more. The first iteration is the original Red Suns Mazda that I think looks the best. The red interior pops really well against that yellow exterior, and it also makes the shape of the seat it's super visible and I think that looks great. The front end is very round. There are layers of round tiles mixed with slopes on their sides, rounded bricks in the front, and the headlights here don't pop up or down physically, but you can replace them with these pieces that show them closed if you like. One of the best shapes of the Mazda that can be seen on all versions of the build is the marrying of the curved slope and the inverted slope by the door. It's pretty subtle, but really necessary for getting the feel of this car. The rear wing is pretty high here with some nice rounded areas in the back. And now let's get to what they call the fourth stage of the car in the series where the mods have changed up the look a bit. It feels pretty similar, all things considered. The rear wing though has come down in size, it matches the body a bit better and probably gets you better downforce to drag ratio compared to the original, but I don't really know. Now you can argue which looks better in the comments below. Personally, I like the red interior better, but here it is in all black for this version of the car. And actually there are quite a bit of subtle shape changes in the front grille and headlight area. Overall, the face feels more or less the same for this iteration, but the build is in fact actually quite a bit different to get all those little minor changes to pop through. Now the final version of the RX-7 has some more substantial changes. There's a bit more of kit all around at the base now. You can see it in black along the bottoms and an extra bit of lip along the bottom sides in yellow with a deeper curve on the side too. And then when you get to the back, there is more kit and it's all in black. Plus when you go higher up, the rear wing is a GT2. So the mounts are thinner and black and then the actual wing itself is also a bit thinner and a bit wider and curves forward. Spinning back to the front again, the hood is black now. There are some vents for better airflow and a completely different build for the bumper and lights. It is an aggressive look for a decently aggressive driver. And I am curious to know which version of the Mazda RX-7 you actually think looks the best. Let's get on over now to the final car. It belongs to one of the more villainous characters of the whole series. This is Aikawa's Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 5. The, the driver is certainly one of the easiest characters to hate, but I don't know if I could say the same for his ride. The Evo 5 was one of those limited releases from Mitsubishi specifically designed to compete in the WRC. It's a narrow boxy build with a busty front end and a lot under the hood for a stock build. The front spoiler is clearly visible along the bottom. It's got those nice little round fog covers a deep center split vent on the bonnet, and the back end is extremely thick with some great details for lights, the rear wing, and it's just an awesome looking car with a lot of texture and style. It's too bad such a cool car from the series ended up with such a bad guy, but I guess he was just relying on his ride to win him the race at the end of the day, and that 
Well, you should just watch the series to find out if you don't know. Wow, for just six cars, this actually was a bit more involved to knock out in terms of a video than I initially anticipated, but it was a lot of fun to make. Let me know what other models you want to see in the future, of course, and if you are familiar with Initial D, what rides would you like to see in a batch two if there is one? Top of the list for me would be Shingo Shoji's Honda Civic, mostly because a friend of mine had basically the exact car and we used to beat it up all the time. But anyways, that's just me. Remember, you can get the instructions at BrickVault.toys. We sell them individually. There's also a couple of different bundles. Everything's linked in the description below. And thank you so much for watching this whole video. If you enjoy our content, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, share, and we'll see you next time at BrickVault.